Hey guys, how you doing? Thank you for coming in. This is the live, amazing. How you guys doing? Actually, it's still like yesterday for us. So I just left work like four or five hours ago and it's like 10 p.m. right now. So for you guys who came across my video and you don't know me, hey listen, my name is Mohammed and I'm a registered nurse, currently working in the United States, but originally I'm Lebanese. Amani is coming in a bit, we're gonna discuss her NCLEX, you know, updates, stuff like that. And I'm gonna answer your questions that you guys posted earlier on one of the posts on the RM Alpha Slice group. So today is Thursday, I work four days a week from Tuesday to Friday, but still, I come home, I hustle. There's, there's no cutoff for me. Hey, hey, Manny. Hey, I, I'm sorry because of that. Those lines on the screen. I don't know how to like fix those in the meantime. But this face detector is gonna switch from my face to Manny's face. Hey, man, how you doing? His birthday was uh, like three, four days ago. Happy birthday! Hey, happy birthday name? from the Alpha Slice family. Olu. Olu. Olu Femi. It's like it's like a French name, French kind of name. Hey, thanks man for tuning in. So we're gonna answer your questions that you guys posted on on the uh, on the picture that I, I actually I was in the bathroom. Like I took a selfie in the bathroom and uh, Wasim said, "What's with the uh, like paper roll?" I'll show you the picture. Cause you don't follow me on my social media, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's the picture. <laughs> so you did the paper roll and we'll see him look what he say. Hey, the only question in mind now, what the, uh, that toilet tissue doing in a picture? Well, I'm taking a selfie in the bathroom. What do you expect? Okay, okay, guys. So I'm Annie. Come on, I'm so excited for you. So Amani's Anklix exam is gonna be on January 27, 2018. If you haven't followed us on YouTube, please go ahead and follow us. We're posting Amani's like journey with the Anklix, you know, some of the struggles, stuff like that. And sometimes those live videos, we're posting them on, on uh, YouTube as well. So are you excited for your exam? Six weeks out. Yeah, six weeks. From, okay, from Sunday, six weeks. From this Sunday. From this Sunday, six weeks? Yeah, six weeks. So. I feel that you're confident, like you can go no, and do I'm the test still, right now. I'm excited, but I'm still scared. I'm also scared. I mean, that fear will, will not go away. It will still stay there until you get your results. Yesterday, you're welcome, buddy. Yesterday, I was so down. Yeah, yesterday you were down and you called me. And you said, hey, Mo, I'm gonna fail. Yeah, because every time I do the 75 questions, I feel there is a lot of new, more information that I don't know before. Of course, honey, like, there's, there will always be information that you don't know. Yes. So d don't sweat, don't sweat about it. Hey, Destiny, how are you, man? This is an OG supporter for the Alpha Slice. I think he's like, Maybe a uh, fifth or sixth subscriber to my YouTube channel. So he's been there from, from like from day one. Hey Ryan, good morning, good morning. Ryan actually, she like put alarm on her phone, like five minute interval alarms so that she can wake up and participate in this live. Hey, hey, how are you? Good, good morning. morning. How are you, Ryan? I know, man. I know you're a hustler. Like waking up at 5 a.m. just to like participate in this live, man. I'm so humbled by you doing that. Thank you. Okay, Manny. So come on, let, uh, tell us a little bit. Like, where's your progress? Where are you at right now? So you're solving Anklex questions. Yeah. And you almost finished all the audio lectures by Mark. Yeah, I still have the cardio. You still have the cardio, which you, you just started today, right? Yeah. And thanks to you guys, like, you are awesome. She's been having troubles with cardiology, with antihypertensives, and you asked for their support, for their help. Yeah, so what's her name? Mary? Mary. Mary, she, she sent me 
uh, a cardio audio today. Thank you, Mary. Appreciate it. Right, her name is Mary. Mary, yeah, uh, I think Mary. For mercy, or I think. I don't know you. I was working today, honey. <laughs> you were you were talking to them. Because I was just talking like, very quickly. Okay, guys. Okay. So. Thank you for your support, like... I want to ask, what's the name of the lady that she has exam on... On the 24th? Uh, I'm not sure. But I think, I think her name is Mary as well. All of them I mean, are Mary. <laughs> everyone's name is Mary, but I think, I think it's Mary. Hey, if you're doing your exam on the 24th of December, Christmas Day... Or the day before Christmas. Tell us about your preparations. Please. And your feeling. DM Amani. Direct message her. If, and if you have any secret tips. <laughs> no secret or tips. Recipes. You, ha you have to support her. You have yeah, to encourage if you, her. Like, if you, hey girl, you can has, do it. She has the audios. Hey Ryan. Amani, your aim. Is not to learn everything, everything. content wise. Instead, your aim should be to learn the strategies to conquer. Yeah, this is what I'm focusing on. That's 100% true, 100% yeah. true. You cannot learn everything. Even doctors, they don't know everything. True. Okay, so we're gonna jump. First, like one of the, you know, one of the nurses, one of the nurses on the WhatsApp group that we talk you know, through, it has all the nurses in the pre-arrival. So she said... Okay, so... So she said that what she did with her husband is that she drew, she drew a baseline and then she started, you know, like answering a sample test and when she got a correct answer she took it like a step above the baseline and if she got a wrong answer she will get she will take it a step down you know the baseline or whatever so Amani tried that today and these are her results so wait wait a second wait a second I can do it so Amani actually so listen this is the first page so Amani actually started here so with every question she goes up, every wrong answer she goes down, and then here she hit the baseline, and from here forward she was like sky high and sky high and sky high and sky high. And this is the continuation. See? <laughs> I'm proud of you, really. I'm proud of you. Yeah, but the, the still I know that yeah it's different they because they will make the question more difficult yeah, to they, answer correctly. They will change Not the sequence. Like the couplet. Yeah, but so, I mean, I mean, yeah, that's a good so, start. Yeah, it's about luck. That's, about that's a the, good start. That's the order of questions that you get. I know, I know. That's why I'm telling her. Yeah, we need to encourage her many more often. Yeah, you're doing a good job, Amani. So now, we'll jump to the questions. Abdul Karim is asking, how easy is it for one to get a job offer there, he means in the United States, if he's got everything like CGFNS and IELTS? Man, first, let me tell you. You cannot work in the United States without a CGFNS and NCLEX and IELTS, you know, and you have to have your green card. So if you have all that, you want to get a job offer, right? I'm going to give you a tip that no one talks about. Hey, listen. I'm gonna give them a tip, no one talks about it. And every employer in the United States look for it. Ready? Hey, listen. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm on all social media, different content on different platforms. So make sure you subscribe to my Instagram my YouTube channel, my Twitter, and my Snapchat. And I'm very active on Snapchat, so for those live videos, please stay tuned. Every employer in the United States look for it. Ready? LinkedIn. LinkedIn. As soon as you apply, 
your resume to an employer the first thing the employer is gonna do he's gonna check you out on LinkedIn if you don't have a LinkedIn profile I would suggest go right now after this live is over go right now build your LinkedIn profile because every job in the United States is I mean depends on your LinkedIn so you should have connections you should have uh, a good profile picture and you should summarize your career experience education stuff like that so your resume should be clear on LinkedIn I would suggest you go ahead and um, build your LinkedIn profile and if you want examples check me out on LinkedIn connect with me and you know give you suggestions so destiny hey man bingo that's what's up I know man I know all-time subscriber Ryan I was just about to say that yeah in the end clicks you get a more difficult question yeah, I know I mean you're the expert I mean when we have questions right when we have questions about anklex who do, who do we ask first what do you mean I mean, when we have questions regarding the anklex, who do we ask first? Ryan. Ryan, you're the expert. <laughs> you are the expert. Um, I have put effort into the LinkedIn profile. Thumbs up. You're smart. Let me tell you, not everyone has a LinkedIn profile, but the first thing the employer is gonna do, he's gonna check you out on LinkedIn. If you don't have a LinkedIn, then then your CV or your resume is not as authentic. So I would suggest just review your LinkedIn, update it, put pictures, post pictures, you know, um, articles. If you write articles, there's a section on LinkedIn that you can submit articles and you, you need to have a lot of connections and th they will value that. Okay, so I'm gonna move to the second question. Okay, Richard, what's up Richard, Wisconsin? Richard, actually he works in the United States. He works in, at Wisconsin, so just our neighbor state. But, what's up Richard? He's, he's talking about discrimination. Yes, based on race and gender. For example, no male nurses survive in OB. See where I'm going? Is he an OB nurse? I mean, I don't, I don't think so. But what do you think? Like, do, do you want, do you want to work in OB? Check fundus like all, all day long, all night long, man. That's not fun. I mean, if that's discrimination, well, I will commit. But male nurses, I mean, I don't know. But in my work environment, they value male nurses. Like, they'd like to keep them 50-50, But there's, there's not as much male nurses as you know, like female nurses. But what is his question? Does I mean, he, he wants he, like he, to he's, work as a, he wants them to let him work as an OB nurse? No, like here I, I said in the text that we're gonna discuss questions, anything about language, culture, admissions, discharges, medication, administration, procedures, dressing protocols, breaks, colleagues, physicians, bullying, dress code, critical thinking, policies, benefits, transition to the United States, you name it. Maybe he related it to some of these, but I mean, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not clear. So, no problem. Hey, Ryan. Shukran. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you deserve it, girl. So, she, actually, she learned Arabic. Like, she has like Arabic books in her apartment. If you watched her last vlog, she has like Arabic books in her apartment. She tried to learn Arabic on her own. Okay, moving on to the next question. Let's see, let's see. So, Destiny, I would like for you to relieve the fear of medication administration, bullying colleagues, and documentation. Hey, this is for you and for you, Destiny. Let me tell you, have no fear. Trust me, man, have no fear. Is it different from overseas? Heck yeah, it's different. First off, Pixis, like we're familiar with Pixis, you know, from Saudi Arabia and stuff. So Pixis, Google it. So Pixis is like a machine. You so so medication doesn't come up from pharmacy. 
you have all your medication in this machine called Pixis on the unit. So you have to access it through, you know, the patient's account, stuff like that, pull up your medication, right? There's no room for error. If that patient does not have the medication, the Pixis won't give it to you, right? Okay, when you go to the bedside, you have to take that medicine and go to the bedside. There's computers in every single room, okay? So you sign in. And then there's like a barcode scanner. So you scan the patient's ID. So there's no room for error, right? So you scan the patient's ID, then you scan the medication. If you have the wrong medication, then it won't scan. It will give you error, patient does not have that medication. So, so basically, every room for error is eliminated. So, there's no room for error. The only thing that I struggled with, I'm doing a YouTube video about my experience with my PRN job at MedSurge unit. And it talks about, I mean, one of the, one of the struggles that I had is I wasn't like fast and like giving the medication. So it would take me for like five, six tablets, it would take me like 30 minutes to pull them out from the Pixis give them to the, like scan them and give them to the patient but there's there's one thing that's different from practicing you know overseas is that if the patient is having like multivitamins coreg um paracetamol or you know whatever medication so you need before you before you scan the medication or crack the tablet open you have to ask the patient hey i'm gonna give you multivitamins do you want it he says yes so you scan it Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm gonna give you calcium. Do you want it? So he, he would say yes, you scan it. If you scan a medication and then the patient refuses it, then you have to justify. So you have to explain every single medication for the patient. Like if you're giving him Seroquel and then he says, oh, what is that? No, I don't think the doctor put me on that. That's not my med. So you have to explain to him. And that's what, where, you know, I was taking a lot of time. Like imagine if I want to give, like in med surge unit, you have four to six patients. Imagine I'm giving that, like six patients, you know, 30, 30 minutes with every patient. That's hectic. So that's, that's my take on medication. What else you asked? Uh, so bullying, man, I'm telling you, if you will work in a magnet facility, or a hospital that has more than 400 beds. Trust me, there are policies in place for bullying. No nurse will, will dare to bully another nurse. No physician will dare to bully another nurse or another physician. And you know why? Because you can freaking sue them. You can sue them for like emotional discomfort or something like that. That's hilarious. So, I mean, I've never faced any bullying in the area I work at, you know, in both hospitals. Everyone is nice. Everyone is em empathized or sympathized? <laughs> empathized or sympathized? Empathized. Empathized with you because you're an international nurse. They treat you well. They like to know more about you. So, so like, take it off your list. Uh, colleagues and documentation. Documentation, I'm gonna talk about it down after I get to Ryan's questions, but documentation is very important. All documentation are electronic. So Avant prepares nurses, you know, with typing skills, like typing tests or training. So you have to get like 35 words per hour, per, per minute, uh, so that you would be um, competent to like work in, in hospitals in the United States. Yeah. So, I, when I first came here, I used to type like 60 words per minute. But now, I know I can type like 70 to 75. Just because of the practice and you know, stuff like that. Because you know, back home we're not typing. You know, my last job for the, for the past 18 months, I was, I was writing. So it's very important to improve your skills in typing from you know back when you're home so when you come to the states you're ready don't neglect those training lessons that Avant provide keep practicing keep typing you need to get up to 35 words per minute and if you get to to 35 words per minute hey heck jump over it 
Okay, go to 60. Okay. So now we're gonna jump to Ryan's question, and she has a list. Ryan, she's always, I mean, she fascinates me, because she always has questions about a lot of stuff. Okay. Yeah, man, Sue, Sue, Sue. <laughs> I know. What's Sue, Sue, Sue? Like, Sue people. Yeah. Uh, is Pixis quick to use? It's yeah. very quick to use, it's very smart. Uh, I just take 20 pills of each for I mean for each patient from the shelf and sure I have to locate them but I wonder if Pixis will slow me down considering the amount of meds at each time no it will not slow you down and it will eliminate every room for error so I think it's amazing and but not all the medication for each patient will be in the Pixis here in the States yes Oh. So they have like a Pixis drawers, a Pixis like a cabinet, and then a Pixis oh, fridge. Oh. So the fridge won't open. It's it's a Pixis. You 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 have to type oh. fridge. It, it's a Pixis item. Yeah, in Saudi Arabia, not all medications. Yeah, like ID <laughs> medication that needs a fridge. You, we used to put them in a fridge, and which is which is not connected to the, to yeah. the uh, Pixis. Yeah. But yeah, it's different. It's different. Yeah. Zero tolerance. Yeah, zero tolerance to bullying. Okay, now we're gonna jump to Ryan's questions. Documentation in terms of language use. So, documentation here in the States, if you're talking to the patient and the patient, like, said something, so you have to put his exact words. You say, patient stated, and, you know, open quotation, and you state his exact words, like what he said. And you always refer to yourself as a third person, for instance, if I say RN, and so instead of putting your name, you put RN because it's signed. So instead of saying I and I and I and make it personal, you 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 document as if you're a third person. So you say like RN spoke to MD, MD suggested uh, or MD. Um, gave a verbal order of uh, Tylenol to tablets, PO, every four hours, PRN. So that's the way you document. And you say like, social worker talked to the patient and the patient stated, quotation, I have no money to buy, to buy the medicine. So that's the type of documentation. If that's if narrative. But if there is a symptom involved, like a patient is having a chest pain and you need to assess the patient more, so he says, are you having, so he says, I'm having chest pain. And then you say, oh, when did this start? And um, like, how much is it on a pain scale? One to 10. And does it radiate somewhere? And uh, is it like, describe the pain? Like, is it sharp? Is it burning? Is it whatever? Are you having nausea or having vomiting? So all these investigation, all these assessment, so you need to write it as a soap note. So every symptom is written as a soap note. So subjective data, data, whatever the patient is asking, and you know your 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 investigation with him. So you put it in the S, which is the subjective data, and the O, which is the objective data. So every hospital is different. My hospital, they say they want the diagnosis of the patient, the last. In my, in my case, like last office visit, um, next office visit, and that's basically it. In the assessment, you need to put the nursing diagnosis. Okay, what's the nursing diagnosis of the patient related to this, due to this, whatever. And in the plan, like what did you do to the patient? Okay, I, I gave him whatever, Tylenol. I, uh, I changed position. Talk to the physician. Um, I suggested um, to stay in PO. You know, whatever, whatever the plan, whatever recommendation you did, whatever, what I mean, whatever you say, you just put it in the in the plan. So that's documentation. If you have any any more questions, like specific questions about documentation, just let me know. Okay, so Ryan, spoken nursing slang. I mean, if the patient is, is, is speaking slang and you want to, like the patient stated, and you want to put the slang, you can put it. 
if he's like swearing, he's getting aggressive, you can't you can't put exactly what the patient said. That there's no problem with that. Uh, how to maintain proper hygiene without wearing scrubs to and from work? Ryan, bad news. Everyone wears scrubs to and from work. So you want to be the black sheep? I don't know, but <laughs> truly, truly, like, like everyone goes to work wearing the scrubs, and off work wearing the scrubs. When they go off off work, they they go to the grocery store or whatever. They're wearing scrubs. So after work, when I go to the uh, supermarket to do some grocery shopping, I find tons and tons of nurses over there. So everyone wears their scrubs. Yeah. And lockers. There, I mean, there there are lockers in in, in every department. And every nurse will have a, a locker and there's like a dressing room, a bathroom. They're, they're nice, they're neat. Attitudes about immigrant nurses, uh, among, uh, among nurses and patients. Hey, let me tell you. The best thing ever is to be an immigrant nurse in the United States. And the reason being is, I mean, everyone sympathize, empathize, I don't know what's the word, but with you, they would like to make everything comfortable for you, like ask you if you need anything, do you need help, stuff like that, because they don't want you to feel neglected. So they would like to make sure that you have everything you need to do your job. And you know, with Avant, like the orientation period is 20 weeks for international nurses. Well, my orientation was two weeks. Actually, it was 10 days, but I mean, it depends from person to person, but you have up to 20 weeks, you know, to adjust to your environment. Patients, they would like to talk more with you. Like, if you're an international nurse, they would like to ask more personal questions. Like, where do you come from? What do you do? Why did you come to the United States? How long have you been here? Do you like it? Do you not like it? You know, stuff like that. So, why did you choose Illinois? And you have to go, through all the process of, I didn't choose, I was assigned, you know, stuff like that, so. Yeah, I mean, it's it's nice. It is a nice environment. It is a nice, caring environment. I love it, and I, I bet you guys will love it as well. So, adjusting to a team, I adjusted pretty quick. Because, I mean, the hospital I work at, they love Avant, and, I mean, Avant nurses have been good. I don't want to say great, because I don't want to like take sides, but I mean, Avant nurses have been great. Like they have the knowledge, they have the experience, they're doing their job properly. I mean, they they are rarely getting into troubles. So um, attitudes is so positive towards immigrant nurses. I like it, and adjusting to the teams has been fast. Relationship with nurses, I mean, it's so easy. Like our triage team of oncology nurses like eight of them and I felt that instantly I was friends with everyone. I mean maybe in the cancer center it's different from like um a a unit like in, in the hospital. But you know with my work and, and I guess it's different because with my work at Gibson you don't get personal. It's just work, 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 work. But everyone helps everyone, and the nice nurses are super nice. And on weekends, oh my god, I gained like ten pounds already. So it's it's a culture, it's tradition. I mean, on weekends you can cupcakes, cakes, ice cream, you know, all kind of recipes. Like the other day, they were having competition, a sweet like the best sweet or cake or cupcake competition in the cancer center. So it, it gets crazy sometimes, but it's super nice. Doctors, amazing. I mean, I mean, they're funny, they're humble, and they like they they they, they communicate. Like, I mean, my doctor he doesn't mind to go back and forth into his office like fifty trips a day just to have proper communication with his nurse. I love that. A newcomers and an immigrant. What do they expect? I mean, they expect you to do, they, they know that you're experienced. They know that you're fluent in English. They expect you to learn typing, to improve your typing, typing skills. 
and they expect you to be able to adjust and do your job after 20 weeks of orientation. If you don't, then I guess you will because like no one doesn't. Because I feel like when you come here to the States, you're, you are full of these emotions that you want to succeed, you want to prove yourself, you want to make it, you want to adjust very quickly. You want to love everyone. Like, I love every bit of everyone and everything in the United States. I mean, I feel, you know, the same feeling that I felt when I first came to the United States like seven months ago. I still have that same feeling every single day. Like, literally, I wake up, so I'm ironing my shirt, and I'm thinking, hey, am I really in the States? Like, listen, come here. Come here a little bit. I want to talk to you. Like, I would say, am I really here in the United States? Like, did I make it? I can't believe it. I, I mean, I still can't believe it. I'm so thankful. Like, as, as Gary V says, I live off gratitude. I freaking love it. So... I'm so excited for you guys to come in here and, you know, have the same feelings, but it has been amazing. Practical level when you need an order for it. Hey, yes. Orders from physicians. You don't need to get orders from physicians. Like you would have in your chart 20 PRN orders. Some orders you would never think of. If the patient is hungry, he can eat. <laughs> If the patient doesn't want to take his pills, it's okay. Like orders like that. So you would never need to talk to a physician because they put every single PR in order you can think of. But if you're working like in an ICU setting and emergencies take place and you want like, there would be orders like stat EKG if the patient is unstable um, like uh, parameters for inotropes, stuff like that. Th these orders will be in the system. If you need like an order for uh, chest x-ray, so you call the physician. Like there's always an on-call physician. Like my physician, he puts orders in the system. So my I, I start working at seven. So I see orders at like 5 a.m. They don't mind. Like they, what I felt is that they feel that if they are not on board with everything, like, how do I say it? Like, it's an expectation that they work on holidays, on weekends, at night, you know, during vacation times. They work every single day. That's why they make fun of, like, dermatologists and dentists because, like, they work office hours and they make fun of them that, oh, these are not real physicians, so... I mean, phys physicians, anything that has to do with the patient, just pick up the phone, call them. They're more than welcome to address your concerns, stuff like that. So you don't have to worry about it. I know like orders like oxygen, IV bags, these will be, you know, PRN orders. As soon as the patient is admitted to the unit, you will have all these PRN orders. You don't have to ask for them. So scheduling, scheduling where I work at, you know, at Carl, the manager puts the schedule. I mean, it's basically like, it's a routine because we work office hours. But if you need like off days, you request them. Most, most probably you're gonna get it. You're gonna get your off days. And there are like policies in place for like requesting vacations and you know, like urgent situations or you know, stuff like that. So, I mean, no one has ever had troubles with that. And if the team is on board, then, then you're gonna get your request. So it's not self-scheduling. But you can put your request in at any time and um, they will take it into consideration. So, but like with, with my PRN job, so I have an application on my app phone and I pick up my shifts. Like I get to choose, I wanna work that day or that day or that day. And this is like, this is amazing. So I pick up the shifts and then they approve them and then I go to work. Hey, I've addressed all your questions. Some of you left already. I know you've got to work, get ready, stuff like that. So that's it. Hey, 
If you are not on my YouTube channel, please go ahead and subscribe. If you are not on my Instagram, please go ahead and follow me. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on LinkedIn. Build your LinkedIn profile. If you are not on my Snapchat, which I love, go follow me on my, on my Snapchat. I'm gonna put links down below in the comment section. Go ahead and follow me and please share. Just that click, share with your friends. Give me some love. Share with your friends. Share with your fa no, not with your family, but with your RN friends. Please share my videos. Love you all. Ha I mean, have a good night for me. Have a good day for you. Have a good morning. Hey, hustle, okay? Give it your best. If you're sitting for your anklex soon, I wish you all the luck in the world. And you, I forgot what's your name, Mary. I think you're Mary. You're doing your exam on the 24th. Please direct message Amani. She wants to talk to you. And that's about it. Love you guys. Until next time.